this video is just going to do the last example that we had left um, from 5.1. 5.1.3, we're looking back at that commuter on her way to work and the number of red lights she hits. And we're just going to go ahead and calculate um, the expected number of lights she's going to hit and the standard deviation. Uh, expected number, remember, is the same thing as our expected value. And in this case, I've written down the formula. Our expected value and or mean is just the summation of every possibility times the probability of that possibility happening. So we could easily do this by hand just multiplying every x by its probability as we go down the line. It's not very exciting. So I went ahead and just filled out the rest of this for you. If you do this calculation, you get out 2.25. Uh, standard deviation, as we did it in class, I like to use the second formula. Um, and I like to do the summation portion of it first and then plug that into the square root. So the summation of every outcome squared times the probability of it happening. So that'd be zero squared times it's 0 0.05 plus one squared times that 25% chance of happening and so on. Again, I'm just gonna pause uh, for me and give you the answer to this. And if that finish that summation on your own, you get 6.65. Uh, and of course we cannot get excited by this, this was just a portion of what we needed before. This is our summation, and we still need to subtract off uh, our mean, which we found previously, squared, and do the square root of all of that. It looks like we get 1.25996, ugh, and we round that to four decimal places, we would get 1.2600. So those are our two values. Uh, no need for units on this particular case because these are both a number or a count. So this is the number of red lights. The expected number of red lights is 2.25. The uh, standard deviation is 1.26 lights. Um, this also points out that we don't want to round these. Just because numbers means a whole number, that's not the expected value on average. We do want to keep all those decimal places. So in the previous example, when we worked with the, the dollars, you'll notice I did not round those dollars to $4.13. I actually kept all four decimals because we're talking about an average. If you want to stick around, I'll show us again how to do this in the calculator. Um, so I, I went ahead and I have a little calculator emulator. and if you want to do this in the calculator, first thing I to do, turn the calculator on apparently, and then we need to go to the stats section. I know it's hard for you guys to see what I'm doing because it doesn't give us a lit up cursor, but the stats button. Um, and we're going to choose edit. So we'll press enter. In L1, we're going to put all the amounts of lights that she could hit. So she could hit zero up to five lights on her way to work. And then this is where I would hope that I memorize those numbers, but I am not sure because I'm lazy. In L2, we want to put all the probabilities. So 0 0.15, 0 0.25, 0 0.35, all of them along with the corresponding number of lights. I think it went to a 0 0.15, a 0 0.15, and a 0 0.05. We'll find out if I'm wrong very quickly in the next step. Oh, this should be a 0 0.25. Oh, I gotta go up. All right, so hopefully those values are all correct. I will find out because as I said in class, once you do this next step, you really wanna make sure that you are, um, that your N, your sample size in this is one because that's saying that everything here in this row summed up to one. So once all your data's in, you're gonna go back to stat and over to one bar stats. Now, if you have the stats wizard, you're just gonna tell it to use those values in L2 as your frequency list. Now remember to make L2 come on the screen, you're gonna press the second button and then the number two, because you can see L2 is right here on the screen. Uh, and then you can tell it to go ahead and calculate. And there you see, I screwed up. I did not memorize those values correctly because my N is 1.1 and not one. So I need to go back to the table and see which one of those I didn't have down right. So it looks like my values should have been 0 0.5. That was where I screwed up. I put this as 15%. So I need to go fix that in my calculator. 
So in the calculator, I'm going to go back, edit my list, 0 0.05. But see, this is why you can use that in as a check. So I'm not even going to redo this video. I'm just going to leave it this way because I think this is a valuable lesson. So now if I go into my one bar stats and press calculate, you can see here my n is 1, which means I have 100% of my data. My x bar is my mean, 2.25, and my standard deviation is that 1.2600. Um, if you don't have the stats wizard, let me turn that off so I can just show you what you need to do. If you have the 83 or an older 84, when you choose one bar stats, it just throws it on the screen. So you have to tell it that your data is in L1 and that your, your frequencies, your probabilities are in L2. And you do that by putting L1 on the screen right after one bar stats, so second in the number one key. This is also what you would do if you put your data in like L3 and you wanted to use it. This, tell, this is how it tells it where your data is. And then a comma to say, oh, I also have frequencies. And then a second in the number two, tell it those frequencies are in L2. And if you press enter, you get the exact same thing without, without having the wizard there to help you out. So that's how we find a mean or expected value and a standard deviation from a discrete probability distribution.